In this episode, hey everybody, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill. I'm uh, working on a LBSC Titch locomotive. Here's what the book looks like. Let me show you that in case you're not oriented. There you go. And as you can see from my rather dramatic introduction, I've just made a little whistle. And I used a piece of copper eighth inch pipe. It's just under seven sixteenths of an inch diameter. And I used some bronze pieces for the end cap and the base. And I think it came out really nice. And I'm extremely thrilled with the sound. Although it is high pitch and annoying, I think it's going to be great. That was about 55 PSI of air pressure. But this will be kind of hidden on the chassis of the titch. And I think it will be fantastic for running and making the appropriate warning noises. Um, I'll show you... In this, this episode, I did create the steam line for it. That's kind of what inspired me to go ahead and make the whistle. I haven't obviously made the connection yet because I need to see where the whistle gets mounted. And obviously, I have to cut this tube here. But this is the, the uh, steam header that has the whistle valve in it. So after I made that line, I thought, well, I might as well go ahead and make the whistle. So I've done it, and I did mess up. This has been an interesting week. Because the uh, first first go around, I messed up and I had to remake both the end piece and the tail piece there, and I learned a valuable lesson. The mo the, the one thing I want to convey, I'll kind of jump to the chase. The first time I made the slots for the steam, I made them way too big, and I was I was looking for resources. I have the LBSC shop shed and road book, and he talks about making whistles in there. But there's no real specific dimensions applied to it. Luckily, I have the Kozo A3 book. And if you look on Kozo's book on page 179, he shows how to make a whistle about a 5 8 inch pipe. And right here where I'm pointing, he, there's a little detail item that shows it's just a, a 10 thou, right, right there, 10 thou total cut for the steam to go through. So when I made mine, I really was careful. As you'll see some scenes I have my OptiVisor on, and I, I would file a little bit, and then I would use the micrometer to take a measurement and make sure I didn't take off too much material. Because on the first go-around, I took off way too much material. That's why I had to redo everything. So it's been a great learning experience. This will be a relatively short video, I think, but I hope you enjoy it. And I couldn't be more happy with the sound. I know it's, like, like I said, annoying and sharp, but that's what we need for, you know, make a nice track warning device. So um, today is Easter Sunday to everybody that celebrates a religious holiday, whether it's Easter, Passover, Ramadan. I wish you many blessings and thank you for your continued support of the channel. And um, please give me a thumbs up if this is interesting to you. If you have a question, please ask and I'll do my best to answer it. But thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoy this little short episode. Take care. It's Monday night and starting of a new week and as I mentioned in the last video since I had the blower valve out and installed and the the steam manifold up here I thought this would be a good opportunity to go ahead and make the little steam line from the manifold to the blower it's 532nd inch copper and as you can see I think it came out pretty nicely nothing spectacular just um I did want to point out that I was so glad that I had pre-made a whole bunch of these copper ferrules and the brass nuts that go on the proper size. And I saved them back when I was doing the mass production, so to speak. I saved them and I put them in a little Altoids tin, the 532nd inch cones and nuts, so I didn't have to reinvent the wheel and make a bunch of those for this. Also, while I'm pointing things out, this was a mistake. If you watched my video on making the steam header, I did not do this on purpose. I actually screwed up the way this um, this the the whistle um, steam supply line comes out. But it's a blessing in disguise because it's going to make it that much easier to run the steam supply line out and away, maybe either inside or just outside of. The blower line so I think I'll actually make that next while well, I've got all this stuff handy I don't have the whistle made yet but I have a general idea of where it's gonna go we know the line needs to come out and then go down 
So I think that'll be the next next thing up that I make. But as you can see, I screwed the nut on here, and I'm really glad that that thing's at an angle because it gives you just a wee bit of extra clearance. And it will clear, everything will clear the whistle valve itself, the little handle. So that's all good. Very happy about that, actually. Let me turn this around, and those of you that haven't followed the whole process. Okay. All right, another productive session. Last night, I formed this 532nd inch copper line for the uh, whistle, and so it's connected up to the whistle valve on the turret now. And I just left, a, I annealed the copper, I left a little bit on the long side so I could make a whistle. Haven't made that yet. And what I'm thinking about is trying to make it out of some of this copper. I've got some eighth inch copper pipe and a couple of pieces of brass. So it's a little smaller in the outside diameter than it's called for, but I've never made a whistle before. And since I've got, I've got several pieces of this laying around, I thought I would take a shot and just see what it sounds like anyway. So that'll be the next thing I work on. Here's the pipe with a little 3 16 inch slot milled in it, 3 8 of an inch up from the bottom. So I'll uh, file that a little smooth, deburr it a little bit, and we'll see if it works. Well, here's the completed whistle, or attempted completed whistle, made from the design in the LBSC book. It would have been a great size. It would have looked nice, this copper pipe, but it didn't work. I can try some filing down a little bit more. I'm not sure what I may have done. I may have messed up and filed too much of an air gap, um, but just blowing on it, it doesn't make a sound. So we can try it with some compressed air later on, see if that works. But what I think I'm going to do, I don't have any 7 16 inch brass pipe. I can order it, of course, but I don't have any. I do have some 5 8 and I found the uh, Kozo A3 book makes a whistle out of 5 8 inch pipe and it's a little shorter so what I might do is try to make a Kozo whistle this weekend at least see if I can learn how to do it so that'll be next well, here's the whistle I even tried I sealed the ends with a little uh, Teflon tape just to make sure that it was no leaks that were affecting its operation and I also tried with a little uh, uh, air, air blow gun you just get a little bit more velocity and it did not whistle, so now I have, before I completely re, completely scrap this, I have an idea. I think what I'm going to do is drill it out to 5 sixteenths, because it's, um, it'll be a little thinner wall then. And then I'll have a predictable inside space, and then I can remake the cap and the bottom parts, and just see if that makes any difference. I've never made a bell before, so all of this is... I mean, I've never made a whistle before, so all of this is a learning experience. All right, here we are. Let's kind of take two on the LBSC whistle. After boring out the body to 5 sixteenths of an inch, I've turned a second stem down here. This is just about 20 thou over. This is already threaded quarter by 40. I've already put the center drill and the number 40 drill through here. I've done a Nicer job, I think, of cutting the little steam slot there. I still need to drill the number 40 hole through the center of that. We'll do that later. And just about ready to cut this thing off and then reverse it around. Turn it to a nice snug fit and in the tube and then put the hole through there. And the big, the big thing, I think I realized what the big problem was. I think I filed the flats the uh, steam passages, I made mean, they were way too wide. And looking at the Kozo book, they're, they're, he only calls for 10 thousandths of an inch. So I think I'm going to start small and then adjust. But I'll show you that process. And one of the mistakes I know I made before was there was way too much play in these parts here. And now I've got it so it's, it's quite a snug fit. So I, I did, I got it within a couple thou by the using the diamond tool holder <clears throat> but I used files to get it down to the the final bit there so we're looking good now 
We'll take this out, we'll put it in the collet block and drill the number 40 hole crossways through here. And um, then after that, once then I'll know where my uh, passages are. And going by the Kozo book, I think I'm going to just file like 10 thou off very small, very incrementally here on, on either side. 10 thou max. I'll probably try to creep up on it and test it, <clears throat> excuse me, with my air compressor. See if we can actually make this whistle blow. Here's take two of the copper pipe whistle. It's just pushed together. It is very nice and snug and I have not filed anything away from to make a steam port. What I thought I'd do is just try it now and um, try it with uh, with some compressed air and see if I get a sound. If I do, I'll bring you back and show you. If not, I'm going to take it apart and file just a wee bit off and just kind of creep up on the on the steam gap there. All right, here's a test. I only took off about three or four thou on either side of the fitting, so I've got about 60 PSI. I'm starting to get a little bit of a whistle. I think I need to take it out and file a little bit more off, but here, let's see if you can hear anything. Yeah, not much of a whistle sound. I'll keep working on it. All right, before I put it back together here, hopefully you can see those little flats. That's about five thou, five or six thou off each side. You can see the little flat there, and you can see it a little clearer on this side. I'm checking it with my micrometer. It was only about 10 file strokes, 10 or 15 file strokes. So we're really trying to creep up on it. So now we'll put it back together and try it again. Okay, I just tested tested it again after that, what I just showed you with the little flats. So, as you can see, I got my Optivisor on that really helps with the filing of the flats. I just tested it. I got about 60 PSI in the air compressor tank. Check this out. Obviously a lot of loose air there, but <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that. I think that's about perfect. That will certainly get people's attention on the track. So with that, I think I'm going to declare this a success. I'll take it apart, clean it, and put it together as a permanent assembly, but I'm uh, pretty excited about that. <laughs>